when you're thinking classic cameras that produce beautiful images, what countries do you think? Germany, Japan, definitely not Poland. Well, today's star comes from Poland. Ladies and gentlemen, this here is a twin lens reflex camera made by PZO Polskie Zakłady Optyczne in Warsaw. This is historically quite significant camera. Starts with the first cameras manufactured in Poland after World War II. The company PZO, which is an acronym for Polish Optical Works, Polskie Zakłady Optyczne in Warsaw. This company was also known as WZFO, which is Warsaw's Photo Optical Works, Warszawskie Zakłady Photo Optyczne. Now, you obviously cannot compare this camera to a Roliflex or a Rollicord even. If I were to put it next to something, I would probably put it next to Yashica A, which is like the lowest model of Yashicas. I always wanted one of those beauties. And a few years back, I got a Start B, which is one of the, one of the models in, in the line of Start cameras. But it wouldn't work, and the repair was economically not viable. So... Uh, the camera went to somebody else who was happy to to take it free of charge and I was without a start and so many years have gone by I was looking to see if there's anything interesting on the market and this guy came about so without further ado let's take a closer look at this classic Polish start twin lens reflex camera I'm going to start with the lenses, obviously <laughs> the most important part of the cameras. So these here are triplets, uh, three element uh, lenses, and they're the better ones, the Emitar lenses. There was also Elktar lens, and though that lens was f4.5, and this, these are uh, the, the taking lenses f3.5, and the shooting, the viewing lens is uh, also 3.5. The shutter on this camera is unknown. Uh, it is probably known, but I don't see the name of it on it anyway. And the shutter speed ranges between 1 15th of a second all the way to 2 50th. And the aperture ranges between f3.5 to nf22. Now it's very simple to set the shutter speed. You simply turn the knob to desired speed. And to change the aperture, you simply move this little lever and align it with the markings on the bottom of the camera. And quite simple. Also on the front, the camera features um, PC Sync. It's an X PC Sync port for your flash. On the side, you'll find your focusing knob. And on the bottom of, of the plate, it says Made in Poland. And also, uh, the scales obviously in meters, and there's a depth of field uh, scale as well on this, on this camera. Now, an interesting thing, when I first got it, the whole uh, lens plate, the whole lens assembly, it seemed a little bit skewed to me, a little bit off. So, this damn thing recording. And I've seen that before on one of my Yashikas where the lens plate was skewed. The Yashica was eventually sent out for repair. Now, 
I don't know anybody that can repair starts. I'm sure the same people that repair Yashikas or even Mark Hansen could technically take a look at it, but the price of, of any sort of repair would just not be viable. So I, I looked at it, I figured, okay, it should not have any ill effects on, uh, on the operation of the camera. The problem was it looked kind of skewed, but it turns out it's a chimney that's skewed, not the lens plate. Now, the problem that this camera has is the mechanism that allows the whole element to move. There's a play in it. And the play is between f uh, what's, what's it, 5 and, and infinity, 5 meters and infinity on the knob. So if I move the knob, hopefully you can see this, I move the knob quite, quite a bit, the assembly does not this uh, lens assembly does not come come out until I actually hit a point and then when I bring it back in that's when it actually moves so there's a there's some kind of play I'm not gonna take it apart I ran a roll of film through it just to see if it will have any issues with focusing now there's no issues with focusing on the pictures but there's issue when you're actually trying to focus in the chimney on the ground glass you'll actually see that that play you will you will turn a knob but the camera will not focus so you have to crank it all the way out and then bring it back in and on the way back you will actually catch that focus on the bottom you will have uh, an interesting latch uh, to close the uh, the hatch now on the Ashika cameras you turn the knob here and it will push away the latch and then you can you can open it. There's a little pin and a little play with a hole. On Roliflex and Roly Quartz models, you have this lever here, just like this one, where you actually push it to the side and it releases the, the latch mechanism. Now the issue I had with this one, when I took it out to shoot, uh, the the latch would accidentally get pushed or I would accidentally push it so I would always have to keep in mind to make sure the latch has to be one way and not the other because it will open up the whole back and you obviously ruin your roll of film and you don't want that. You also have uh, three feet which is interesting because most cameras that I have have four feet. I guess uh, cost savings. Now on this side of the camera you have your shutter release, which is quite interesting to have it on the side versus have it on, on the front of the plate. You have it on the side and you also have uh, a way of attaching your remote uh, cable to release the shutter. Then you have your film advanced knob and then you have your uh, knob to load uh, or remove the spool inside the camera. Well, I'll show you that in a second. Now in the back of the camera you'll have the viewing window where you align your frame numbers from the film. This camera does not have automatic stop and it does not have automatic um, or does not have double uh, shot prevention or you, you just have to you just have to know that you need to advance the film after every shot. You make it a habit and it will automatically happen for you. You will not even think about it. So, now the early model, I read somewhere that the first model start, the, the start, just start, some people call it start one, they were not uh, uh, marked start one. But those first cameras, they actually had a crank, the crank advance and it would have a counter on the side, it would stop. The later model was a start two and also had a crank as far as I can tell. And then the start B came by. And they start B remove the crank and they introduce the knob. The knob is really cheap. It's a bakelite knob and most of the knobs are. So it's quite cheap. I don't like the feel, but it is what it is. Uh, communists tried to do their best to to produce these cameras and you know they did a pretty good job, I, I you know can't say. They didn't. Now later comes start 66. And, which is this particular model, and then at the end comes Start 66S. Now I heard some of the overall production was over 100,000 of these cameras, which is you know, which is quite a significant number, I would assume. And 
they were also exporting these uh, to Western countries, and they were exporting these under the name Noko flags. Is it Noko? I think it's pronounced right. Noko flags. So it's quite interesting. Now, also, you'll notice here that on top of the right on, above the window, right window, you have a little button, so to speak, which goes side to side, and that actually pushes a little window cover inside so that you do not expose your film in case you turn the camera towards strong uh, strong light. So let's take, take a look at the chimney itself, the focusing uh, chimney, a viewing chimney rather. So it, you know, it does not close very smoothly. I have a feeling it's um, something was done to it, it was either bent, maybe dropped. As you can see there's some scratches here, so this is probably something that needs to be addressed by removing the, the hood itself and maybe checking the, the attachment points and see if there's anything I can help it do. The nice thing is it does have a magnifying glass inside which pops open by pushing the front uh, plate with the uh, logo uh, and it will release the little uh, magnifying glass which, help you, which helps you with uh, focusing. And definitely you need that. The dark, the ground glass is pretty dark. You'll also have what they call sports mode, which is a little square uh, knockout. And then you, what you do is uh, you fold the front element, and it should stay there. And you can actually see through the little guy here. The only thing is you need to zone focus it when you do that, because obviously your uh, ground glass is you, you don't use that for for this kind of focusing. So in order to open the camera, you would just push this lever to the side and then the latch would, there you go, pop up, you would swing it open and hey presto, here's the inside of your camera. Nothing special in there, it takes 120 film, it um, it's pretty clean. I was actually it was really surprised. Uh, it was pretty clean inside, and the focusing mechanism, which is visible in there, it, it's pretty it's pretty easy to access. I guess if you need some work done, uh, you align the film obviously with um, a window. You do not have any markings inside. Now an interesting way of reloading reloading the new uh, roll of film is that the top knob. It's spring loaded, so you pull it out. But the bottom one, no matter how much you try to pull it out, it will just not go. Because you have to actually unscrew it like, like a screw. And then when you reach a certain point, it is spring loaded. And you can put your fresh roll of film in there and then turn it back in until it's tight. And then your film is loaded. Now this is the, the knob uh, on the other side I was telling you about that you can actually, I don't know if you can see it, you can, see it. You can actually uh, shut the little shutter that closes um, the window in case you get some exposure to sun that can, that can fog the film. I also noticed that the ceiling was pretty good on the back of the camera. They used a little a rope, a uh, cotton rope I imagine this is, same as Yashikas did in the days, and it's not just some silly foam, it's an actual rope, which once it's in, it rarely ever needs replacement, it, it will last for years, and the ceiling on the back is just really good, I can't complain about that. Now, there are a few things worth mentioning, is that Yes, it was the first camera built after World War II in Poland. There was a whole host of other cameras. Ami was one of them. Uh, Phoenix was the other. Uh, Alpha was it Alpha or Alf? Uh, Alpha was another one that they made. Uh, Thirty-five millimeter, a one-twenty film the cameras. A start seems to be the one that's most recognizable one. Uh, I guess it's. Um, it was very popular at the time, and so was Phoenix. Phoenix was pretty pretty advanced. I did not see any Phoenix cameras um, on the market for sale. I've seen an Ami or Alpha, but they wanted like two hundred eighty dollars for that camera. 
just crazy amount. I'm definitely not paying that kind of money unless I find one really, really cheap. Then I can probably buy one and put in a collection just for the heck of it. But I wanted a start and I didn't care really what model. This is a newer model. This is towards end of the production because they were making these guys all the way up to 1980s which seems kind of odd but if you really look at it Yashiko was making their 124 G's all the way into the 80s as well the company went bankrupt now I kinda got sidetracked but what's really interesting is that the Soviet government which controlled obviously controlled Poland controlled what comes out of the country allowed for this kind of stuff and it, they didn't shut it down they they just let these people have it and this is something to be proud of and if you're if you live in Poland if you're Polish or if you have some Polish heritage in you it's actually interesting to know that Poland did make some cameras in the beginning of the video I said what country do you think of when you think cameras and photographic equipment we obviously don't think Poland um, Germany comes to mind as, as number one and Japan is the second one. Kodak American doesn't really come come up come into my mind as something significant. I guess it's just the um, the fact that they made cameras for the for the masses, whereas Rolleiflex was cameras for people that could actually afford it and for pro professionals. And then you have Leica or Leica. So this is a this is a really really interesting uh, little guy and I'm really happy I got it so now at the end of this video I'll be showing you pictures taken with this camera I, I shot a roll of Fuji Acros that I had sitting around and you know why the hell not took it out to my favorite spot which is the Grove it's winter and you know it, you don't really get much interesting things happening but Whatever there is, I, I put it in film. And I was really surprised uh, by the quality of this three element lens. These lenses work very well, and the camera worked very well too. I was, um, I'm really happy with it. So, that being said, I finally got it out of my system and I finally have a working start. I hope I didn't bore you. Until next time, keep shooting film, keep the film alive. Może ty jesteś mą królewną, której szukam dzień po dniu. Jeśli tak, to już wiem na pewno, zbudzę serce Twe ze snu. Nie zaklęciem zbudzę je tajemnym, nie słowem, nie trunkiem, ale najzwyklejszym pocałunkiem. Takim dołem trafił